we have a new comprehensive plan. It is a very, very robust plan. It's going to do a lot of really good things for the town of Casco. It's going to, it's going to allow growth, but it's going to also allow us to keep our rural mentality, as we call it. So, again, thank GP Cog. If, if you ever need assistance with, with that, they're, go see them. They're amazing, and Vanessa has been just as good. So, thank you very much. Have a good day. The Armith is making progress on affordable housing. We don't have it, you know, new units yet, but the success that we're reporting is we are getting past our own inertia. And the tool that got us there was locking people in a room. We had an affordable housing summit. In January, we brought together all the necessary parties. We had the town council, planning board, affordable housing committee, chairs of the comp plan committee. We had two public meetings facilitated by Christina and attended by our town planner and other staff. In the first meeting, we learned that we were actually all on the same page, and that freed us up to move forward. Uh, we were able to focus on setting priorities and creating a roadmap and timeline for taking specific actions. We've already passed an affordable housing production goal, incentive program for developers, adopted criteria for funding affordable housing programs, authorized feasibility studies for town-owned properties, and our planners are working on drafting zoning changes to allow for smaller minimum lot sizes and multifamily housing in our growth area. With all these pieces in place, and LD 2003, we're laying the groundwork for new affordable housing units in various forms to be added to our community. Counselors, raise your hand if you enjoy coffee. Keep them, okay, raise them up. Raise your other hand if you're a counselor. Okay, keep them up. Now sway like this because I'm going to preach. <laughs> All right. So we started in uh, 29. I started on the council in 2019. Uh, as you remember, 2020 was pretty disastrous with COVID, but that, that was also simultaneous with when we were doing our vision and values process to preempt our comprehensive plan, which we just passed last night uh, at our council meeting. We were pretty proud to say. Um, that being said. During the vision and values process, we learned from people that uh, they wanted a way to get back or, or be heard in the community where it wasn't in the public forum necessarily, where they where they could just chat one on one with direct feedback and have that um, communication uh, openness with uh, current council. So in 2021, we started coffee with counselors. It's something that many counselors did when they were uh, out campaigning, but maybe it was a little bit harder to do during COVID. So over Zoom, every month we alternate the days. Sometimes it's on a Tuesday at 10, sometimes it's Thursday at 2. We do a Zoom meeting with two of our counselors and we just listen to people in the community. It started out rather small with a half dozen people and now regularly we get about a dozen or more people on Coffee with Counselors. So again, raise your hands up if this works for you, Coffee with Counselors. <laughs> I just wanted uh, to focus on homelessness. I know you're shocked. Uh, that's an issue that the city of Portland has had to deal head on with uh, for a long time, but really specifically over the last year. And our big success was towards the end of last year, we worked with the Center for Regional Prosperity, thankfully, and opened 166 Riverside, which houses right now 100 and over 185 asylum seekers, which helped free up space at our Homeless Services Center and helped us house a uh, number of people at that facility, including adding 50 beds, which we worked with the city council to do over the last year. So all of that allowed us to address encampments on the streets of Portland and throughout the city. And then we had a great success in January. Um, in January, uh, it was the first month in over two and a half years that the police department did not respond to a single overdose fatality. Wow. That's amazing um, and that we have seen just the benefits of this and this collaborative work that we've done with the Center for Regional Prosperity, but really with all of our partners throughout the region and we're just so thankful we're, we feel that you know this is just the, the best is yet to come and hopefully this is just the beginning. So 
Thank you. We as a city worked really hard to try and not have any new positions created because of budget issues that we all know about. Um, and we, the, the fire chief came to us and said very clearly that he really, really, really would like at least one firefighter paramedic. Um, and he begged and he begged. And so what we as a city council did was we tasked our TIF council with finding money and the, um, finding, figuring out with how we could change our TIFs so that we could pay for emergency equipment with TIF, which is something we didn't know you could do. Um, and so now that is going to happen and we're gonna fund a lot of our emergency equipment with TIF, freeing up the funds to hire a new firefighter paramedic. Uh, so this year was a big one for Bridgeton, perhaps not as big as Wyndham, uh, but we officially this January flipped the switch to turn on our brand new $28 million wastewater treatment facility. Uh, about half of this was funded by rural development and we were later awarded an EPA earmark uh, that we coupled with Cumberland County ARPA funds to do uh, an extension project for our sewer mains. And we're constantly trying to find new ways to expand our service area further into our downtown neighborhoods. Um, this has really opened the door for a lot of infill development in our downtown and just shows that in a rural place like Bridgeton, attracting business and housing is not just about the land that you have or the ordinances that you have in place, but uh, really that, that critical infrastructure that you have to support it. So, thank you. So thank you again to all of our uh, What Works participants. These are some examples of the things that work in our regions, cities, and towns every day, every year, whether we hear about them or not. This is one place you can come and share a little bit of that with each other and uh, get a little uh, wisdom going on. Um, can we thank all of our presenters again, please?